has learned Iranian fighter jets have fired on an unarmed American drone in international airspace. The incident, which occurred last week, puts new pressure on President Obama to deal with Iran's hostility just days after winning a second term. The news also comes as the president and prime minister of Israel try to repair their relationship after a tense few months. Out front tonight, the Israeli ambassador to the United States, Michael Oren. Ambassador, always good to see you. And I wanted to start with this developing story. We learned that Iranian fighter jets have fired on an American drone. Did your government know about this? Well, I won't get into sensitive uh, 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 intelligence issues with you on, on television, Aaron, but what I can say is that uh, the United States and Israel uh, together view Iran uh, as a threat, not just to Israel and the Middle East, but to the entire world. And uh, Ambassador, here's what uh, Pentagon Press Secretary George Little had to say about the drone today. I wanted to play it for you. We, we believe this is the uh, first time that uh, an unmanned uh, aircraft has been uh, shot at uh, over international waters in the Arabian Gulf. Is that an act of war? I'm not going to get into uh, legal labels. Uh, the uh, reality is that uh, we have a wide range of options, as I said before, to protect our assets and our forces in the region, uh, and we'll do so when necessary. Ambassador, if it had been an Israeli drone shot down, would you consider it an act of war? Well, we have the Iranians firing at us through their proxies, uh, whether it's Hamas or Islamic Jihad uh, in Gaza, uh, virtually every day. This year alone, we've had 700 rocket attacks uh, from Gaza on our population in southern Israel. So, it, I mean, I guess the question of an act of war is you kind of would agree with what the U.S. is doing. You're mad, but wouldn't do anything. I think this is an act of naked aggression. Aaron, and uh, I think it falls, it is one of a series of acts of aggression perpetrated by this irrational Iranian regime that has conducted and plotted terrorist attacks uh, across five continents around the world in 25 countries, uh, in 25 cities, including this city in Washington, uh, D.C. Uh, again, that's not a, re a regime that you want to have to have access to uh, military nuclear capabilities. And all of this talk about what to do with Iran, of course, is it, it, it comes down to the relationship between your country and the United States. President Obama and Prime Minister Netanyahu talked today, and I know the president called the prime minister to thank him for his congratulations on re-election. But I wanted to share with you some of the headlines the day after the election. These were, uh, you know, around the world, Washington Post, New York Times, Daily Beast. Netanyahu rushes to repair damage with Obama. I was one after perceived tilt toward Romney. Israeli leader must mend ties with Obama and a third Obama and Bibi's rocky road ahead. Obviously, in Israel, uh, the prime minister has also taken some heat for a perceived support of Romney. I, I guess the big question is, can the relationship be mended? There was nothing to mend, Aaron. Uh, President Obama has said that he has spent more hours in conversation with Prime Minister Netanyahu than with any other foreign leader. Um, they've had about 10 meetings. I've been present at all those meetings. Those meetings have been friendly. They've been open, uh, been very constructive. Uh, we have a lot of common challenges facing us in the Middle East, uh, whether getting the Palestinians back to the negotiating table or, again, preventing that irrational Iranian regime from getting uh, military nuclear capabilities. Uh, and the Prime Minister of Israel Israel, the president of the United States are together, to, to, together committed uh, to meeting those challenges, to strengthening the already uh, very strong historic alliance between Israel and the United States. Um, if that's so, I mean, I just want to ask you about a report today in Israel. The Israeli newspaper Ma'ariv, they reported today that you, uh, in private, were worried that President Obama would want to, quote, settle scores if he was reelected. The report is completely, completely without foundation. Uh, nothing I ever remotely said. And again, I've been president at all these meetings between uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Obama. And I can say again, these are friendly meetings, open meetings. Um, there was uh, another phone call several weeks ago between the Prime Minister and the President. It was exceedingly friendly. Uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu met with Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Again, a very friendly and constructive meetings. Uh, we're allies. Allies can disagree some of the times. The great test of, of alliances is not whether we can agree on anything, but how we move ahead of our disagreements. And today, yeah. whether it be on the Palestinian issue, the Iranian issue, so you might on have to go through a dozen counseling, other... But you stay married? Oh, we're quite married. We're historically <laughs> married, and we're going to stay that way. <laughs> All right, but what does the re-election of President Obama mean for action on this Iran issue? And I wanted to, just a couple things here. The Speaker of the Knesset, Danny Danone, said today, Obama's victory brings home the fact that the state of Israel must take care of its own interests. We cannot rely on anyone but ourselves. And in an interview with uh, Channel 2 in Israel, which aired on the eve of the presidential election, here's what uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said. He said, if someone sits here as the Prime Minister of Israel and he can't take action on matters that are cardinal to the existence of this country, 
its future and its security, and he's totally dependent on receiving approval from others, then he's not worthy of leaving. Uh, leading, I'm sorry, I can make these decisions. So it sounds like another four years of Obama could mean Israel's alone. You're going to have to take action alone. We, uh, of course, Israel as a sovereign state uh, has to defend itself, and President Obama has said publicly that only Israel as a sovereign state can best decide how to defend its citizens. Has anything changed on the timing, at the, obviously at the UN and in the, in the very widely seen speech that Prime Minister Netanyahu gave? He gave a timeline of, of the spring or summer in terms of Iran reaching the point where it would have the capability for a nuclear weapon, uh, which Israel believes it wants. Iran, of course, denies. Is that still the timeline? Well, more specifically, uh, the Prime Minister in his speech at the, at the United Nations was pointing out the point at which we can no longer prevent Iran from acquiring uh, military nuclear capabilities, nuclear weapons. And yes, he gave a timeline that mentioned uh, the spring or the early summer. And, uh, but, but it sounds like you're specifying, you're saying that would be the last point you could do anything, but you're not saying you will do anything. That is the last point beyond which we can prevent Iran uh, from gaining those military nuclear capabilities, yes. Interesting nuance there in the Israeli stance. Out front,